So these metallic nano puzzles have become rather popular here in Japan. Uh, I have seen um, several different subjects. I have seen, uh, like, uh, of course, Tokyo Sky Trees is popular. Um, I've seen various insects and such. Um, um, many different famous buildings. There's also several Star Wars ones available. My wife got me this Millennium Falcon for my birthday, and um, just recently I also picked up this. This is the Imperial Walker, the ad at. I have also seen an R2-D2, and um, brand new, um, I have seen the uh, Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Sorry, I have a cold. I'm kind of stuffed up. So... Neat stuff. Um, it just makes you want to just uh, collect them and build them. Oh, really? Now it gives you instructions on how to build these things. I've never, d I've never done anything, uh, any of these at all before. But they all just kind of fit together somehow. I assume there's instructions inside. Otherwise, I'd be quite lost. But you got these tabs here and slots. So basically, you just, you know, grab some tweezers. And then, uh, you know, twist them and uh, bend them to make sure that they, uh, they they fit together properly. Now, I was planning on putting together the Millennium Falcon. However, I, I want to make this one. Uh, Mother's Day is right around the corner. And just as I had done the Lost in Space robot for my wife for her birthday, I want to do this for Mother's Day. She, my wife really digs these things. She really, really likes these. So this is um, laser cut. High quality metal model. And 360 degrees, basically it's 3D. It's, you know, it's not two dimensional is what that means. So let's open this thing up. See, it's got a scene from Empire Strikes Back here. That's neat. Alright, let's open this up. I really hope that there is instructions inside. I'm sure there's got to be some instructions. I want to keep this as a secret so that my wife doesn't see what I'm working on. Make it kind of a surprise if I can. Okay, so now there are two sheets here. And uh, I've never worked with um, any photo etched parts for plastic models, but I imagine it must be something very similar to this. Interesting here. So, like, you got like this tiny little point here where you, you I guess you're supposed to sever it. Huh. And, oh thank god, here's the instructions. Oh golly. Yeah. Wow. Look at all this here. Now some of them, uh, what? Some of the space is just for instructions on how to take care of it. It's got like the part numbers and such. So, it involves some bending. Hmm. To go fitting around like the right, right here. You have to bend this part here to fit around the, the leg sockets, apparently. Get them all to fit together properly. Weird. Really weird. Okay, I'm going to maybe remove some parts and get a feel for how this thing works. Um, gosh. Alright, so like the first is once you do the head assembly. And even once you get like a like a pencil or something or a pen and wrap it around it. Odd. Very odd. I've never done anything like this before. Hmm. So part number one is the head here.
No, this is the body, so this is not it. Um, and here's the head right here. So, I need to make a couple of, uh, cuts. Oh, okay, here's... Alright. Here, here's where I do it. Hmm. Okay. I'm kind of nervous, actually. <laughs> Let me get my, uh... Let me get my, my cutter here. My X-Acto knife. Jeez. Eh. Okay, so where do I cut? Where do I cut? Alright, I make a tiny little cut here. I assume I use a blade for this. Did I cut it okay? I've never done this before. Oh, alright. So it's just held together in like a three, three parts here. Three little points. There we go. Hmm, okay. Here's the head. Hmm, okay, well that was clean. I guess. Or maybe I should file it? What do you think? Should, do you file stuff like this? Huh. I don't know. Huh. Now I guess I should maybe take the time to try to translate these Japanese instructions, but um, so like uh, using a nippers. Maybe I should just use my nippers to cut these things hmm. instead of using the exacto knife. use these. Although I might want to use the crappy ones though. I don't know if I want to use these on metal. I might dull it. I'd rather use that for plastic. So, huh. okay, so these parts should kind of bend easily. Yep. Sure enough. Okay. And it's got like the back of this head here. Cool. Hmm. Okay, now let me cut some of the other parts here and uh, get back to you on this. Okay, I found that. It's uh, easier if you just use the nippers here. I guess these aren't distressing the, the edge. On this, this too much, I guess. So now, what we need to do is get a nice pair of scissors here. I think these ones might be finer tipped. Which case here? This is like the front of the face of the of the walker, and you kind of have to build a box around it here, there, and then maybe uh, kind of push it around this here, kind of mold it there. I'm afraid of breaking these things. I've, of course, you probably don't want to move it too much, or else the parts might s snap and break. Oh my gosh, this is so so small that you probably can't even see the what really what I'm doing with the camera. Um, but okay, so this kind of fits together pretty easily. Now, gosh, all right. So now this just fits into the face here. Oh my, 
that's such a small detail. And, uh, yeah, it just, just fits right there. And you have to just make sure that all the little grooves, the little pegs go into the grooves here. This is kind of fun. Very meticulous. Very small parts you're dealing with, though. Can you uh, get in there for me? Wait. Is this upside down? No? Okay. Shoot, see, I missed it totally. Get in there, you little dork. Quit pushing me off. Maybe I should just kind of pinch it a bit with my fingers there. Wow. <clears throat> um, so, I think after this... Uh, hopefully I'll get the hang of this and just kind of skip to uh, me assembling this thing when I have more, uh, a better get grasp on how this works, how these parts fit together better. But um, I just want to show you how difficult this might be on the first try, which uh, this is certainly rather uh, rather taxing I would say okay oh shoot I think I had it in there and it popped out unfortunately <laughs> come on get in there Okay, I need to try to bend this uncooperative part into position. Come on. <laughs> now the whole thing just fell out again. Why is it that only this part doesn't... Okay, I'm just going to focus on the sides then, because apparently the top and bottom seem to fit in rather easily. Okay. Now it's all in there except for the top one here, so let's kind of bend this down maybe and fit it in there. Jeez, I'll be lucky if I get this done in three, four days before Mother's Day. Now this is not happening. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to bore you way too much. I'm just going to edit this out here. Okay, this is pretty funny. As soon as I said that, then I got it in. <laughs> So all four pegs are in there now. So now what I need to do is bend these into place. Just bend them all down. There. Use my tweezers here. Come on. I think my fingernail works better. Then the tweezers. Okay. So that's done. Whew. 
Okay. And here's the other part here. This is part number four. And let's bend, bend, and bend there. And then this is supposed to bend downwards, I imagine. There. Okay. All right. So now this goes on to like the forehead area. This one only has two slots. So I hope this might be a bit easier. Just bend down there, please, okay? Ah. I think I got it. There. It's down there. Alright. Now, let's use the fingernails here. Lock it into position. Alright. So now that you can see the head is definitely taking place, uh, taking shape here. Okay, now we need to get the, the side cannons into place. Um, it says like this part here needs to be fit around. Maybe like um, I can use this X-Acto knife maybe. And you, you need to bend it. So let's just wrap it around the X-Acto knife here. it a nice curve and then we stick this in, in this way there and it's not really good not, not really circular though yeah I didn't do a good enough job bending it hmm Okay. Okay, so now we got three grooves. And that's where this fits into. Ah, well, that was easy. Okay, good thing I have long fingernails. Or not longer. I usually kind of bite my nails. That's, that's bad, and I've noticed my daughter starting to to copy me with doing that. I don't want her to start that. She just turned six. I don't want her to get into the bad habit of biting her fingernails. Okay. So, alright, so this is into place here. And, there. Okay, so, now I'm to find those cannons. Parts of those. Number six and number two. Hmm. Oh, here they are. Unmistakably. So what I did was just kind of position the the nippers from behind. And then just make a quick cut. See? And then it just kind of pops out. Oops, I didn't cut this one well enough. I don't want it to bend. There, okay. So... There we go. Um, 
There we go. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah, so I went to go see the um, uh, Majin Otaki Bean, the the live action Kiki's Delivery Service. It's um, the first week of May right now, but it was in um, in March when I I took my daughter to go see that movie in the movie theater because she was really really anxious to go to the movie. She really really wanted to go to, to see another movie in the movie theater. So I took her to go see that, and it's pretty cool. I mean, of course, people who are fans of the Miyazaki movie, they're, you know, they kind of have their, their precon preconceptions, but I mean, it's not a Miyazaki story. He took the story as a, as a children's story. Um, you know, the witch's delivery service. It was a, a young adult, or a, a children's novel in Japan. And Miyazaki kind of did his own twist to the story. He kind of um, made made a lot of uh, his own little interpretations and changes to the story. So, the Miyazaki movie is its own story. This movie is supposedly closer to the to the novel, so it is quite a bit different. So that was a pretty cute movie. Um, also, fairly recently, it was the uh, uh, Captain America movie came out. In Japan, and unfortunately, I haven't gone to see that yet. I really would like to go see that, though. Okay, so this is coming along here. You can see the the cannons here. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the camera here and just get busy with a lot of uh, work and come back and show you the progress I've made. Stay tuned. I'm still trying to figure out to focus on this thing here. Um, it's a new camera. I'm not used to it yet, but anyhow, um, I have completed the head. So, pretty cool. It's, it's well, not not so difficult. I just, you have to get used to it. And um, these tweezers, I usually, for like making proto bead sprite dart, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use these decals, tweezers, these, these, uh, these seem to grab the smaller details a lot better. Okay, so I got the first leg constructed. Got a little bit bent, though. That's unfortunate. Um, I'm not really sure how I can straighten it out properly, but that was, uh, kind of frustrating, because one of the pegs didn't want to fit in right, and when I pushed in there, it kind of bent the, the legs here. Kind of started a chain reaction. Gotta be careful with this. So um, I'll have to see after everything's put together how it uh, how it looks. But hopefully it's not that's not gonna look too terrible. So there we go.